Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is VAPCH IGNU. This channel is dedicated to IGNU BA Psychology Honours. If you are watching us for the first time, welcome again and thank you for watching. Also don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't lose us to the never ending feed on YouTube. As we know, this series is about BPCC 102 Biopsychology. Today we are starting the third unit that is Central Nervous System. In this video we will look into the spinal cord, its functions and brain and some of its parts. Let's begin. The central nervous system or CNS for short is like the control center of our body. It's made up of two main parts, the brain and the spinal cord. You can think of them as being inside your head, brain and your spine, the spinal cord. Okay. Now because the brain and spinal cord are super important, they are protected. That's where the things like bones and special covering called meninges comes in. These structures keep your brain and spinal cord safe. Okay? The meninges are like three soft layers that wrap around the brain and spinal cord. They have names like dura mater, arachnoid membrane and pia mater. Think of them as layers of armor. So inside this protection, there's something called cerebrospinal fluid which is like a comfy cushion for your brain and spinal cord. It's there to protect them from any sudden jolts or bumps. So if someone loses too much of this fluid, it can give them really intense headaches and pain when they move their head around. And sometimes things can go wrong in our body, right? If there's a tumor in the brain, it can cause too much fluid to build up, which is called hydrocephalus. But don't worry, doctors can help by removing the tumor and draining away the extra fluid. Now. Let's look into the spinal cord. The spinal cord is like a long oval shape cylinder that runs down a spine about 45 centimeters long. It's delicate, so it's protected by the bones of your skull and the vertebrae in your spine. Connected to the spinal cord are 31 pairs of spinal nerves with one on the left and one on the right at different levels of your spine. The spinal cord is slightly narrower at the lower end and has two bulging areas in the neck and lower back regions. Nerve roots enter and leave the spinal cord. The dorsal nerve root carries sensory info to the spinal cord while the ventral nerve roots send motor instruction from the spinal cord to your body parts. Now when you look inside the spinal cord, you will find two main areas, grey matter and white matter. The inner edge-shaped area is a grey matter, mostly containing cell bodies and unmyelinated interneurons. The surrounding part is white matter, which has myelinated axon, kind of like the wiring of your nervous system. Now let's look at the functions of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord has some important jobs. It's responsible for simple reflexes that happen in your body, like quickly pulling your hand away from something hot. It also helps in sending information from sensory receptor to the brain and then relays the brain's instruction to the muscles and glands making it a communication center. Think of it as a relay station too. Okay, It manages the traffic of nerve signals going up to the brain and down to the body. There are different nerve tracts, those are bundle of nerves, for specific jobs like sensing, touch, pain and temperature or controlling muscle movements. Lastly, the spinal cord is a key player in reflexes. Those automatic reactions your body has to things like touching a hot stove. It's like the control center of these rapid responses. So in a nutshell, the spinal cord is a communication hub and reflex center of your body, helping you move, sense things and react quickly to keep you safe. Now let's look into the brain. The brain is like the boss of your central nervous system located at the top. It's kept safe inside your head by your skull and connected to the rest of your body through the brain stem and spinal cord. Now the peripheral nervous system is a network that goes from your brain to different parts of your body. It's like a messaging system sending signals about things like pain, touch, movement, balance and your senses like seeing, hearing, smelling and tasting. We'll dive deeper into what each part of the brain does shortly. Let's first understand the planes of the brain. Okay? Now imagine you are slicing a loaf of a bread into three different ways. So the brain can be sliced in three planes too. The first one is called an axial slice. 
like cutting the brain horizontally. The second is a sagittal slice, like cutting it from left to right. And the third is coronal slice, from front to back. Okay. There are some terms to describe where things are in the brain, like uh, dorsal means top, ventral means bottom, anterior is the front and posterior is the back. The middle part is medial and the sides are lateral. So these words help tell us where things are in the brain. Okay. So the adult brain is like a big soft jelly-like organ that weighs around 1.3 kg. It keeps growing until you are 18. So good nutrition is a super important thing. Okay. But it's delicate. Your brain. Right. So your skull acts like a tough helmet to keep it safe. So imagine your brain is like a precious jelly inside a tough container. The container in this case, however, is your skull. It keeps your brain safe and maintains its shape. Okay. To give your brain extra protection, there are these soft layers called meninges. Yes, we talked about that earlier. Do you remember that? Yes. They are like shock absorbers. The first layer closest to the skull is the tough dura mater. Next is the arachnoid membrane which is softer and spongy. Below that is cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, which acts like a cushion. Finally, the innermost layer is the pia mater, another soft layer. Okay. Sometimes if these layers get inflamed due to infections, it can lead to serious condition called meningitis. So inside your brain, there's something called CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, and it's like a floating pool. There are four pools of CSF, called ventricles. Two big ones are in the middle of your brain known as lateral ventricles. Below them is a third ventricle and the fourth ventricle is tucked between cerebral and brain stem at the base. These ventricles are filled with CSF which helps protect and nourish the brain. Now when you look at the brain surface it's all wrinkly right? That's because it's incredibly complex. The brain has three main parts the forebrain midbrain and hindbrain. So your brain is not only protected by your skull and these soft layers but also organized in these major divisions that each have their own important jobs. Now first let's look into the forebrain. The forebrain has parts like cerebral cortex which does high level thinking and the limbic system which deals with emotions. It also includes the thalamus and hypothalamus which are like switchboards for sensory information and controlling basic bodily functions. Think of the forebrain as the big boss of your brain. It has two parts, the telencephalon and diencephalon. The telencephalon includes cerebral cortex, basal ganglia and the limbic system. Okay, so let's look into the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is like the outer shell of the brain, just a few millimeters thick and it's where all the thinking and processing happen. It's called gray matter because of the small unmyelinated neurons that give it a gray color. Below the cortex, you have got white matter, which is made up of large myelinated axons. Different areas of the cortex have special jobs. For example, postcentral gyrus is like a touch, temperature and pressure handling area. The precentral gyrus handles motor functions and muscle control. The cortex also helps with sensory tasks like seeing and hearing. It doesn't just register information but also combines and interprets it, making sense of what you see and hear. It's like the brain's integration system. But that's not all. The cortex is responsible for consciousness, language, emotions and memory. It helps you understand speech and written languages, plus it stores and receives information from both short-term and long-term memory. Okay. Now let's look at the basal ganglia. So the basal ganglia is just short of support team for your cerebral cortex. It's located under the cerebral cortex and is mostly made up of white matter, which is like the widening of the brain. So the basal ganglia has an important job. It helps regulate voluntary motor functions. It's like the conductor of an orchestra, you know, coordinating muscle contractions needed for posture, walking and other movements. So if something goes wrong here, like damage to a blood vessels, it can cause issues like partial paralysis or vision problems. One more thing to mention is Parkinson's disease. 
It happens when the certain neurons in the midbrain, which send signals to the basal ganglia, starts to degenerate. This disease can lead to symptoms like weakness, tremors, poor balance, rigid limbs, and difficulty starting movements. Okay, now let's look into the limbic system. It's like a ring surrounding the corpus callosum, which connects the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So the limbic system is often called the old brain because it deals with emotions, motivation and memory. It's like the emotional part of your brain responsible for feelings like fear, anger, sadness and even things like hunger, sexual behavior and aggression. So if there is any damage to this area, it can lead to unusual emotional reaction to situations. Plus, since the limbic system plays a role in learning and memory, damage to the hippocampus can affect your ability to remember things. So the basal ganglia helps with the muscle coordination and the limbic system deals with emotions and memory. Together, they are essential part of your brain's inner working. Now, meet the thalamus. It's like the communications hub and it sits on the top of the brain stem. Inside the thalamus, there are special parts called geniculate bodies and lots of neurons. These geniculate bodies are key players in processing what you see and hear. The thalamus is like a brain's receptionist. It's responsible for sensations, again like pain, temperature and touch. Plus it plays a big role in keeping you awake and conscious. It takes information from the brain stem and sends it to different parts of the brain's cortex. Now let's understand hypothalamus. This is located just below the thalamus. It might be small but is mighty important. It only weighs about 7 grams but it does a lot. Okay, the hypothalamus is like the control center of your body's most basic needs and places. It has three special nuclei which help with things like controlling hunger, thirst, sleep and even sexual behavior. It's also in charge of the body's internal balance. It links the nervous system and the endocrine system connecting the mind and body. The mammillary bodies are responsible for your sense of smell. Okay. And it also controls things like heart rate, digestion and even hormonal release from the pituitary gland. One important job is regulating body temperature. If the hypothalamus get, gets damaged, it can cause your body temperature to go haywire and increase a verb normal. So in a nutshell, the thalamus helps with the processing what you sense and the hypothalamus manages your basic survival needs and pleasures. Okay. So that's the end of this video. Let's recap quickly the topics we covered today. There's a spinal cord and its function, brain and the parts in the forebrain. Yes. So the next video will be the continuation of the same chapter with the remaining parts of the brain. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you have any doubts and feedback, please drop them in the comment box below and DM us on any given social media account. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. Follow us on Instagram for quick notes and updates and join the discussion on Telegram for all your questions. Links are down below in the description. See you in the next video. Until then, stay curious, stay engaged and remember, yeah, you got this.